So I've recently been reading up on laser hair removal, and as an otaku scientist, I couldn't help but notice that there are a ton of similarities between laser hair removal and killing a titan in AOT. In fact, I think there are so many parallels between killing a titan and killing a hair follicle that it's possible to give a decent explanation about laser hair removal using just the Attack on Titan anime. For starters, senselessly hacking away at a titan or your armpit hair is never going to result in the permanent death of either of them. You can brute force your way with a sharp blade all you want, but your pubes, like titans, will eventually regenerate or regrow unless you hit them where it hurts. For titans, that weak spot is the back of their neck. You hit them at the nape, and the titan will fall. For hair, that weak spot is the root of the hair follicle. You fuck up the root of the hair follicle, and the hair will die. But these areas are super small and specific, requiring precision instruments for effective targeting. For titan killing, that precision instrument is ODM gear, which allows you to skillfully maneuver around your surroundings. And for hair follicle killing, that precision instrument is a laser, which allows you to damage only the hair follicles and not the surrounding skin. But wait a minute, are we sure that killing a titan is really what we think it is? Surprise, motherfucker! Here comes the plot twist! Killing a titan meant that you were killing the human being inside it all along. And similarly, killing a strand of hair using a laser delivers one of the biggest plot twists in all of cosmetic procedure history. Just like how killing a titan doesn't really mean you're killing the titan, killing a strand of hair doesn't really mean you're killing the strand of hair. It actually means that you're killing whatever is controlling the titan or the strand of hair. In the case of the Nine Titans, the Eldians that wield the powers of the Titans have to be killed to take down the Titan. In the case of hair, the germ cell that's located at the root of the hair follicle and controls the strand of hair has to be killed for permanent hair death. Germ cells are killed in exactly the same way that Historia's dad was killed, using heat energy. The laser's energy is absorbed by the melanin inside your hair, causing the strand of hair to give off immense heat, just like how Historia's dad gave off immense heat while he was in his ugly-ass titan form. The scouts took the heat exuded by the ugly titan and turned the heat against it by setting off a bunch of bombs in its big-ass face. And similarly, the heat produced by a hot strand of hair will ultimately betray its germ cell master by melting the poor little son of a bitch causing it to die a hot, fiery death. Now that we got the basic mechanics of laser hair removal covered, let's answer a few common questions about the procedure using AOT again. Question number one. Does laser hair removal work on all skin types? This is a lot like asking, can you kill every kind of titan in AOT? On paper, yes. But some hair titans are gonna be harder to take down than others. If you have light skin and dark hair, your armpit hair is literally a 7 foot titan. This is the most basic skin type, and it's pretty easy to kill the hairs here because of the sharp contrast between your skin tone and your hair color. And almost any kind of laser or scout will do the trick. Even the no-name scouts who always die like 3 minutes into the expedition can probably slay your pubes. If you have the combination of dark skin and dark hair, however, your armpit hair is literally Reiner the Armor Titan. It's hard to take down your hair, bros! The melanin in your skin is gonna compete with a melanin in your hair for the laser's energy, and basic weapons and basic lasers are not gonna be enough to kill your hair. To defeat the Armor Titan that is your armpit hair, you need advanced technology. In AOT, that advanced technology was the Thunder Spear. In laser hair removal, that advanced technology is a special kind of laser called ND YAG. Question number two Why does hair have to be super short before receiving laser hair removal? You can think of a long strand of hair as the long titan that is the colossal titan. You can try killing your hair when it's long, but that's like trying to bring down the colossal titan when it's just transformed. 
both of these methods are only gonna increase your odds of getting burnt. When you heat up a long strand of hair using a laser, other parts of the hair apart from the root are going to get heated up. And if your long hot pubic hair happens to be nestled up against the sensitive genitalia, well, then the root of the hair follicle isn't gonna be the only thing that's getting burnt. To minimize casualties when killing hair or the colossal titan, it's best to adopt the same strategy of thinning it out. Last question. Why are multiple laser hair removal treatments necessary to eliminate all of the hairs in a region? Each laser session is like a scout expedition. Just like how it's really hard to kill every single titan in one expedition, it's really hard to kill every single germ cell in one laser session. Some titans or some hairs lay dormant during the time that you go out on your laser expedition. And because they aren't visible, you can't kill the germ cells that they control. Also, new hairs, like titans, are constantly being formed. And so even if you wipe out all of the hairs in one expedition, by the time you go out again, there'll be new titans or hairs that didn't exist before. Because of these limitations, only around 15 to 30% of hairs in a region can be wiped out in one expedition. The AOT anime is finally over, and I feel very empty. It's hard for me to admit that I'll never be a member of the Scout Regiment, but I can take comfort in the fact that I can do my part in reducing the number of wicked titans in this world by eliminating the monstrous hairs on my body. Thanks for watching, and see you next video!